One of the things that you knew you had to do with the Bulls in the beginning here in Chicago, and then moving on to the Lakers, especially with Kobe Bryant, and you knew you had to create a team. You had to build a team. And one of the ways you did that was the one breath, one mind. Can you explain how, and what did the guys think of you coming in with your Zen stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are. I you never couched it in Zen stuff. You know, I, I approached it with mindfulness. Mindfulness, yes. You know, I, a lot of our players in the NBA are from deeply religious families, very much like my background. Yes, yeah. And, you know, anything that would com, uh, be a conflict of their religious beliefs, I didn't want to, to touch or get them upset about it. And Isn't so, it interesting how you knew that because you'd come from that? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So we talked about mindfulness as being, you know, as much as we pump iron and we run to build our strength up, we need to build our mental strength up. We need to build our mental strength so we can focus, get one pointed attention, and so that we can be in concert with one another in times of need. Mm -hmm. When you come off the court, you've had a bad call, things going wrong for you, you sit on the bench, you take a breath and you reseat yourself, you reset yourself. And you do that through this mindfulness. You just come right back in and collect yourself. So we practiced mindfulness is what you have to do. So you would literally have the guy sit in stillness. That's right. Meditating. That's right. Taught them how to hold their hands, mm -hmm. where the shoulders had to be, the whole process of you know, being an upright situation so that you're not slouched and you're not going to fall asleep. And... They bought would, into you, it. Would you do this before every game? You would do this regularly? You would do this? We, we introduced it. And we introduced it in training camp. And then day of games, we started using it. And it ultimately became a process where... It's like you know, centering yourself. That's centering, right. Yeah. Just getting back and being centered. Mm -hmm. Did you not also have them play in the dark at one point? It wasn't totally dark, but I wanted them to get the idea of being able to do things that are just out of the ordinary, like silence day. You have a day of just silence. There's a lot of chatter in basketball, and rightfully, you want players to be talking to each other and communicating with each other. But sometimes in practice, it gets too verbose, and guys are yelling and having fun with each other and teasing each other. So I tried to take things out of the ordinary and make them something special so they'd understand the difference. And so were the guys receptive in the beginning to these new ideas about mindfulness and being able to master the yeah. game from the inner? I think they tolerated it. And I think the, the reason why they tolerated it, and this is one of the things I talk about in the book, is about being authentic and, and coming from who you are and what, what you think is important. I mean, you know, Oprah, I tried Tai Chi with the players. They were doing Tai Chi and we tried yoga. We tried a, a, a bunch of things that didn't stick. The players were like, you know, um, I'm too tired after practice to do yoga. You know, I've got tendonitis of the knee. I can't get in a position that's right for Tai Chi. But I wanted to give them opportunities to explore some of those things. But what did stick was meditation. That was always something that was able to stick with these guys. So powerful. Yeah. And then... You move on to the Lakers. Were your mindfulness practices as embraced as they had been in Chicago? You know, I think those guys would have laid down and let me run on top of them or something <laughs> when I first got. They were very, very receptive. Um, there was a, there was hiccups along the way, without a doubt. But as far as as being willing learners with an open mind. They're, they're very accommodating for me, and I, I'm very gracious and glad about that. You actually say in the book that, you know, dr driving a basketball down the court could be one of the most mundane, you know, day-to-day, -day boring, as you describe it, activities, but being able to find the sacred in that. Yes. Yeah. To put spirit into it. You have to, to get spirit, spirit into back into things. Yeah. 